You know, quarantine has got me thinking a bit. Oh my god, what am I gonna do for school? Wait, is my mask I backwards? If I start working out. Crap is it considered that? rude? Yeah, yeah probably. My mask it's September. Uh, yeah, that's a couple thoughts. But the one thing that did stand out was a little show called VGHS. Yes, this freaking show. This webisode crowdfunded extravaganza that first graced YouTube back in 2012 was, and still is, one of the greatest feature-length series to ever exist on the platform. And you might be thinking, is VGHS on par or even better than YouTube original series like Fruit Ninja Frenzy Force, Fight of the Living Dead, or Me and My Grandma? Yeah, yeah that's exactly what I'm saying. So what is VGHS and why am I putting it up on such a high pedestal next to the likes of these current YouTube masterpieces? Well, let me tell you. And a little bit of a warning here, there will be some plot points I'll be explaining which could be considered spoilers, but it's nothing major. Anyways, on to the content. VGHS, short for Video Game High School, is a webisode series released in 2012 that portrays a future world where competitive gaming has risen to international acclaim as the world's most popular sport, with VGHS being one of the most prestigious academies. And I can already see you scoffing through your screen, but hear me out. Yes, it's a show where video games are at the forefront for much of the story, but in no way is it solely revolving around it. It's more of a lens that the story is channeled through, which helps to set the stage, the conflict, and move the overall narrative forward. If it helps, just think of it like it's Harry Potter and Hogwarts, where instead of going to school to learn magic, you go to school to hone your gaming skills. So no, you don't have to be a video game fanatic to enjoy this show. If anything, it just helps in enhancing the experience for yourself if you are one of those people. And you can have those moments where you can say, so, I do. I, I understood that reference. I feel like I have to say that, because the name can be a real hit or miss if you're just scrolling through, but I digress. As the name of this show suggests though, this story is set in the high school of VGHS, where aspiring pro gamers and developers attend. You could pretty much say it's the equivalent of an Ivy League school in reality. The Harvard of gaming, if you will. Luckily for our protagonist Brian D though, he well, kind of flukes his way in because he ends up killing the top rated player of VGHS in a match, accidentally of course, and everyone immediately starts buying the Brian D stocks. I mean they literally give him the equivalent of the Charlie and the Chocolate Factory golden ticket because he gets a scholarship aptly named the Golden Gun Scholarship which is an all expense paid pass to VGHS. But don't worry though, this may be a prestigious video game high school but it's still a high school. And in true freshman high school fashion, everything goes well well, as well as you would expect. We get to see Brian D make new friends, try to be cool, fuck up, and make a complete fool of himself on multiple occasions. Sound familiar? Maybe it's just me. It becomes clear quite quickly for Brian that VGHS isn't exactly what he thought it'd be. For everyone on the outside looking in, he's the one-shot wonder kid who slayed the top player of VGHS. On the inside though, no one really cares. In fact, a lot of the students kind of despise Brian for that. While they may have had to work vigorously hard to get into this establishment, this wannabe pro rides into school in the accounts of one play. Up to actually stepping foot onto VJHS, Brian himself was riding on some swagger before getting reality checked into the fact that he's a nobody in this place right now. And as the new fish here, he has to find his identity and try to be more than someone that just lucked his way into school. Throughout the first season, we see him struggle to do this as he goes through the motions in this prestigious high school interacting and meeting people along the way. At this point though, I think this is a good time to talk about other characters in the story because although Brian is the main focus, there's also a lot of stuff going on, on the side. And let me tell you this, in VGHS there is no shortage of colorful people. The main cast of Ted, Key, Jenny, and the Law are all excellent together. Ted acts as Brian's best friend and tries his hardest to support him, although not always in the best way. I gotta keep my head down. You're right, we could throw you a party. What? In your honor. I didn't say that. Called Brian Palooza. No! Hi, Brian! I have a question about Brian Palooza. He does have his own issues though as he spends the season trying to live up to his dad who is a world champion rhythm gamer, although he sucks at the game himself. Seriously, there's a difficulty reading named after him. For Ted, his story is about coming to the realization that he can forge his own path. Key makes up the trifecta of their friendship being the more knowledgeable and analytical of the bunch and has great comedic timing. Look, I really think that you should look at paragraphs 12 through 90. Any chance you could paraphrase? Oh, okay. Um, read rules. Important. That's not what I meant, Key! Yeah! You get the sense that she doesn't completely understand all social conventions, which is a quirk that makes her all the more endearing. Her heart's always in the right place, though, and she'll do anything to help her friends. 
Unfortunately, good intentions aren't always everything and she has to come to terms with the facts that not everything can necessarily be fixed. Jenny is the love interest for Brian, but it's made clear early on that she's a hard-nosed player and she's in this school to get shit done. If you think this is your average damsel in distress, well, that's not the case. She's a daughter to a family of gaming talents, her mother being a former pro and current coach, and she's expected to make the top team of VGHS and eventually go into the pros. While not evident when she first makes her appearance, we gradually see this kind of pressure weigh down on her and the decisions she has to make. And the law? He's... well, he's a barrel of surprises that you honestly have to see for yourself. Away from the main cast though, pretty much every side character is a joy to watch. They all have their own quirks and unique charms that are honestly hilarious. Just to name a few, Ace played by Zachary Levi is a snarky FPS coach that just radiates confidence and experience. From the first scene he's in, you know he means business. Principal Calhoun, played by Harley Mornstein, acts as a perfect authority figure that is the right mix of intimidation, wisdom, and utter insanity. And this guy. This guy is literally in for three scenes in the entire show, but he makes it count for every single one. Like, look at this! He's just munching on an olive! That's the signature look of superiority right there. I fucking love it. I will say, there are some characters that are somewhat annoying, but they're made to be annoying. Like, you love to hate them. I mean, you can't have a show where everyone's likable, there's gotta be a balance, and there is one here. The last character I have to mention though, which is probably my favorite side character even more than Superior Olive Man, and that's Drift King. Played by Rocky Collins, this guy is absolutely hilarious and steals every scene he's in. He's the leader of the school's racing team and they gave him the quirk that he speaks using medieval words and phrases. It's honestly a riot. I mean, just look at this guy. Hey buddy, look, I got you. Oh. Ah, my thanks, Ted's vassal. Though, in the future, I prefer sour cream and onion. Who are you? This is just a preview of some of the characters in the show, but like I said, they're all unique and interesting in their own way. The show is called Video Game High School, but the video games are just half of it. The high school portion with the character stories are what really make this show engaging and fun to watch. And a lot of this comes down to the actors' performance and how they handle their lines and interactions, so a lot of credit goes to them. Despite this just being a web series, the dialogue and delivery come off very naturally in the context of the setting, and although there are some duds, there are also a lot of moments that are genuinely very funny. Along with this, the show just straight up looks good. It's shot well. I can say I am no connoisseur when it comes to the art of filmmaking, but it would be criminal for me to not point out how well it all comes together. The VFX, the cinematography, the music slash sound production, and even coming down to the minute background details, it's all there. After a while, you kind of forget that you're just watching some webisode series on YouTube. And of course, this is all a testament to the people that made it happen. These guys are storytellers, filmmakers, and they had an idea to create something special that could be enjoyed by many. This was created under the show of Rocket Jump, which you may or may not have heard of, but they were one of the biggest YouTube channels in the beginning as they made shorts utilizing stunning VFX. If you know Corridor, they're pretty similar. What I'm trying to get at is, VGHS was a combination of creative ideas, a push towards a new kind of exciting content. These people are passionate about their craft and just wanted to make something great. For 2012, this was groundbreaking. The idea of getting a bunch of creative minds together, developing a show that was supported by the audience, and it turns out to actually not be bad? I think that's something that is very amazing. If this happened today, many people might not even bat an eye. With new YouTube originals, Netflix series, TV shows, there's literally so much content spilling over that you can't catch it all. Yet. I always find myself coming back to VGHS, over and over again. I just really like this show, it's simple to watch and easy to get into. I've so far only been talking about the first season, and at this point, if my words still did not sway you in any way into getting into this series, well, I urge you to try the first episode. Season 1 was the creator's first shot on this creative endeavor, and because of that, it's really short. The first episode is literally just under 11 minutes, with the last 8 episodes averaging around 15 minutes. So all I ask of you is to give it a shot. Just 11 minutes. Plop your butt down and see if it piques your interest. And hey, if you do end up enjoying it and the rest of the first season, well guess what? There's two more seasons after that which dramatically increase the quality and duration of each episode and if you like what you saw before, then you'll continue to like what's to come. VGHS is something special. It's a culmination of creative efforts, ideas, and fan support that have come together to form a spectacular show. 
the creators were able to channel their passion along with the help of others to make a different kind of experience and I think it's worth sharing. So the next time you're scrolling on YouTube, remember VGHS, give it a try. It's not a YouTube Red series, it's something better. Oh, and uh, there's also Nathan Cress in Season 3. Is that something I should have mentioned?